Stratocut September, welcome. This is uh, Powhouse on Melrose. I have 30 people who have come in on September 10th uh, to see rotating globes. I'm going to do a rotating globe today. Very difficult. Uh, I'm David Daniels. I invented the language, I guess, of Stratocut, which is layers of geometry that are distorted and pre programmed and then sliced up. Um, so it's best just to get right to it. We're talking about rotating objects. Are we good? Okay. Rotating um, objects, I brought in earlier while people were offline some of my rotating cubes. Oh, there, this is under plastic. And you've seen demos of this stuff. It's actually more difficult than a rotating circle. Um, so I'm going to move to rotating circles. These are, this is like a step higher of thinking in time space as you're moving through it. Everybody's had a good look at it in person, so these are really valuable. If, at some point, share them, and then maybe I can send them out for people to study. But um, okay, rotating circles. This is a rotating circle. That's all you need. It is the shape. Uh, it's a it's a double-sided cup. It kind of goes inside on this side. It's kind of convex on that side, and it it's kind of even in the middle, and then it's con vex concave on this side, convex on this side. And if you get another one and another one, these are sculpted by the way, so they don't, you have to line them up right and they start to do this, which is, um, it's fatter in the middle, tapering on the other side. But actually when you look at it straight down the pipe, like straight down the pipe, it should be sort of circle. It should be like a general circle. Like that's the illusion you're trying to aim for, but you're thinking about the time space aspect and, um, let me get my. Uh... Yeah, jump in. Okay, you made those molds out of sculpting. These I did by hand out of sculpting, but yeah. I have, I have made molds. I mean, Colum is uh, indicating this is a molded version of the rotating block. And it's tedious to make molds, so I don't often do it, even though I should. Um, so this is like the mold of the rotating block that I've been showing everybody. Did that little piece fit back up? Did, uh, this, this is it. So we end, oh yeah, I have to go. Can, can you undo it? Sure. And then hand it to me, I'm done. Yeah. Thanks very much. Um, anyway, this is the mold by which it's made. It's a, uh, you can see I made little uh, number impressions, um, like right there, I don't know if you can see that. Like that's the number eight. You see, read that. Um, and that way I was able to, like, when it goes into a pour mold, you heat up the clay, you pour it in after you've made the silicone. And so each of these pieces actually has an assigned identity. You just have to have a scratch for something that tells you what's on the other side. So when I, when I pour the molds, it kind of comes out like that, rotating objects. And again, this is harder than a circle. Much, a bit harder, yeah, because you're thinking about the two-dimensional idea of a box usually looked at that way. So each piece is assigned to a particular uh, rotation on the top of the box, and these are the sides of the box. Uh, I know that was a very hasty, fast little... Did you have a question? Oh, sorry. Uh, somebody's phone went off. Um, so the circle is simpler, and these are sculpty pieces, just so you know, I can pass them around if you want to look at them. They're not... Uh, um, they won't generally break, except Sculpey does, sometimes does. Um, and this would be a good um, idea of the entire, um, I don't know, um, yeah, when you, when you build the entire, like everything is going, this would be like a beach ball spin, the result of that. So it would be like five or six lines and they're spinning like that. Um, and if, for, to, to put it home the point, you can see, this is a really terrible version of it. You can see it from the side. You can cut it up, and there are rotating lines. Super sloppy. Does that make sense? And the, the flip ball is in the, is in the middle. The almond shape is in the middle. And then the outer ones are sort of like quotation marks, and then the really outer ones are just crescent moons. Does that make sense? So there's only five of them in here, but you can put six or ten or as many as you want. This is just, you know, you just have to make them thinner and do the same thing. I could have twice as many in there. Um, once you're done with this, and again, you're looking at it down the pipe like a circle, even though it's that twisted, uh, 
you can actually slice it up this way, like that, put extra lines through it, like really thin, um, what is it, you know, thin, just press play and make it super thin. You can do it in a pasta roller. I don't know if they, they have a view of the pasta roller up there. It's coming in. It's coming in? Oh. Yeah. Um, it's coming in over there. That's what Martin has going on a, on a Yeah, you can uh, see it on Okay. Um, anyway, it makes it super thin. And once you cut it up like that, like this, done, right? Uh, you can lay in the, the, the color that's sort of the line shape. And ideally, because you're trying to make it look like the illusion of a circle, um, note that I'm going to press my thumb into the center and make a little convex feeling out of that thing. And then I can do the same thing on this side. I can concave just a little bit, and then it goes back down. And so what I'm trying to get is the beginning of the sort of um, meridian lines, longitude lines, one of those two, that are uh, carved through an earth. All right, there we go. Um, now, imagine doing that really big. Um, this is sort of that idea blown up, funkin', 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 huge. Um, uh, what, what you see here is the center of the convex side and the center of the concave side. And you see this as a sort of um, how much is stretched in time space, how much of the sort of spatial uh, warping will ha likely happen once. Because once I do the shape on any kind of line, it's going to change the nature of what's going on inside the shape and it warps it. Uh, so, but it's going to do that convex concave thing, only really large. So that's what's coming. Okay. Um, do, how many are new to this idea at all? And how many uh, have a good new? Excellent. I'll do some basic, really fast basics. Maybe some, some have already heard this. Uh, Stratocut 101 is uh, taking any line and assuming where the camera is aimed at that line. If I cut it straight like this, this is to some of the new, new folks. That is just a line. So its animation qualities are zero, none, nada. And if I were to, oh, the problem with this is this, this back, look at this thing on the back. You gotta lift it up about a half an inch. Okay. If you lift it up half an inch, let it go, let it go. Keep going. <laughs> then it drops in. Okay. It should be able to press it in there. It's that sort of um, whatever there we go. the. We're good. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So this is a line going nowhere in Stratocut. If the camera or the live stream is the knife, uh, and everybody's nodding, so this is a flash frame. So if the camera views the knife, it's just going uh, brown, yellow, brown, yellow, or Green, yellow, green, yellow. Um, and, um, and anywhere in between is interesting. It's all interesting, except for this. That's not very interesting. That's me, a fjord. That's a simple extrusion that's 4,000 years old and I did not invent one. You thank the ancients for figuring that out and they put it on pottery. But once you start to put it even one degree off, or two, or five, or 10, and 20, or 45 degrees off, you're getting now animation all throughout and it gets to um, like that. It's a line moving from screens one to the other side of the screen. It gets fat. It gets distorted in the middle. And much of Stratocut is pre-distorting something, anticipation of its motion, so you can make it look like the same shape, even though it's actually moving across screen, left or right, or any direction. Yeah? Wow. Good. This is great. All right. That's 101. Um, then 102 is that's a, that's a dot becoming a circle, animation-wise, it's geometry. It's all around us, by the way. When you start looking at the poles and the posts of every other fire hydrant, and you say, well, if, I, if I'm knifed it this way, what would be the result? <laughs> <laughs> it's everywhere. So circle becoming a cone, box becoming, I mean, that's a square becoming a large box. Just keep those things in mind. That's um, super basic, and then, the crown, the crown on top of that is, of course, angles. It's all about that. So why would I want to shoot a circle? It's boring. Well, it's not boring, but it can be. And so this is a more interesting angle because what is it? It's sort of a, sort of a spotlight, like moving really hard and fast from one side to the other. Does that make sense? 
And so angles are everything. And, and any way you design a loaf, A, it's your job, well, whoever, I'm, it's my job to design where it's headed, and then B, allow uh, shape distortion to rule everything I want to do. Don't, don't try to, you know, Mia Flory, the straight extrusion, the boring uh, female beat stuff is um, good when you want stability. Like character animators want stability, so when you your key pose, it goes extrusion, and then you anticipate out of it in the time flow, and then you go back the other way if you're character animating. Um, uh, that's probably a derivative. We don't have a lot of time, so I'm going to get right to it. Uh, this is planet Earth. I have a little globe. I'm going to keep sort of rotating it so you can kind of get a view of it. Um, down here. Um, and what I did over the last five days is time lapse myself building um, North America, South America. Um, and uh, Africa, Asia, um, there's one continent missing and a few other important things, which are, anybody? What's missing? Australia. Yes, Australia. New Zealand, we're gonna, how many, how much detail do you wanna put into it? <laughs> um, certainly New Zealand, Hawaii, but I was gonna say Indonesia and Borneo, because there are like 400 million people living there. <laughs> they have more, many more people in Australia than in Somalia. Uh, and that, this, this giant thing, even though they're flat, I'm going to show you how to use them as a, as a time-space curve. And this giant thing comes onto this. Um, now, you see it's a little bit different than that. They're not the same. Um, this is for a second step, which I am not going to do today. I'm going to leave a little landmine in here and say, hey, once I'm done with this demo, there's an entire other idea coming, but I don't want to even touch that. It's going to be a different kind of putting meridians and, and, and latitudes and longitudes. Anyway, the, you know, the, the bars on map. I'm going to do that in a whole other session. So here, this is flat. You see it's not quite as concave, convex shape. And that's because I'm using straights like that. That are me laying on it. Um, and while uh, a better person than me could figure out other details to build this all in one step, uh, there's some elegant simplicity in doing straight. Like, it makes sense to humans, so let's do it straight to start. Um, and, uh, and it's a lot of work to super to see if I can figure that out. But the, um, when they go straight, can you get a good view of this? It's okay? I don't know. All right, I don't know if live stream, is it, it's like one thing where you... No, it's, it's right on it. It's right on it? Oh, yeah. Right. Um, if anybody's... We're not watching comments right now. Occasionally, somebody, somebody will step up and look at that. Um, if anybody out there wants to, they're view. just waving. Okay, hey everybody. <laughs> These are straights, um, but they're. I'm going to build something that's a circle eventually. I'm going to stagger it so you see that North America actually is hanging off like that from South America, right? They're not, um, let me get it correctly to myself. There. Okay, so that's how they're built. So South America's hanging off. So when I put it flat, like that, um, I want to stagger North America a little bit this way and South America that way. Why? Uh, because I'm actually eventually trying to get circles out of them. And in, if you imagine I'm making a fucking rotating globe, then uh, the use of time affects spatial proximity of where it has to be located. A lot of words that make really make sense. But, and therefore, sliding these up in space, like Africa is going to be slid up here, and then Asia is going to be slid up here. And what I'm building for is this sort of circle looking down. Good. Um, I, missed, I have to build Australia, and then I have to put um, uh, clouds everywhere, and, and oceans. And um, the theory behind this is really weird, and I shouldn't talk about it yet, but this is, this is sort of like a blue marble seen from the outside. Like it's not, you notice one thing, what color is missing in here that I usually use? Brown? Well, there's brown, a little brown, very little bit. I have some arid desert, so yeah. sort of mm -hmm. brown tan towards uh, black. It's just a buttload of black, and I can explain why. And the reason is, 
I'm thinking I would use that for the meridian longitude latitudes. That's one reason. So it would actually stand out. I can make it super thin. I don't have to make it thick at all. It would still be the smallest thing that's pristine. Um, and the blue marble. This is the blue marble as like a theory from outer space. So why would I put black as the planet from outer space? It doesn't have that, right? It's, you just don't ever see it that way. Um, the other thing is it's a combination of the way clouds move and risk. Like, <laughs> the, the terri I could not, it's too complicated for me to figure out how to put clouds going over land masses with all the amount of texture mosaic you're doing at the same time. Okay, it could be done. <laughs> I'm explaining why I didn't, for that aesthetic choice, this is sort of, I made uh, arid and green and other aquatic zones in here, and maybe someday you can look at it and understand. There's an attempt at that, like risk, uh, which doesn't have real clouds going over it. But the uh, inner, the, the oceans allow me to do that, right? There's nothing, so I'm going to do a lot of that on the oceans. But it's going to be an interesting, weird design, because it's not going to flow over the continents, which are going to still have this really psychomorphic uh, sort of plasma feeling, but they won't be coherent, co coordinated. And I'm saying that up front, so now we all know, we can see it that way. I don't know why. It, it, it's what I was attempting to do. You know what, this is, it's an experiment for me. This is very difficult. I haven't done three of these things ever. But um, yeah, it's going to be fun. Um, oh, yeah, the, the clouds are the most fun. Didn't you do the rotating For Kingry's Playhouse, yeah. I did uh, back in 87. Kiwi's Plumbus episode. Um, this might be a more sophisticated, this is a little smaller than that. That globe was another inch or two, an inch and a half. And I feel I've gotten weaker with age, that I was able to actually cut more, much larger things. And I'm very um, aware I'm at the outer edge of what I can cut manually, so I don't know how difficult it's going to be today. Because this is uh, as much as you can and keep the block stable without getting other kinds of problems. So I'm trying to make smaller things. Uh, with Stratocut, one of the axioms is everything gets bigger. Um, whatever you think you're building, and I was uh, trying to build, yeah, I was trying to build for that. That was like my goal. This is like, okay, this is step one, what I'm going to show you today. All right, I want it to be the Earth. It's going to be really abstracting and not very detailed, and it's going to rotate. And then by the time I'm done, I think, okay, it's going to be this big. And now it's still going to be bigger than that. It's, it's, it's heavy, it's weighty, it just always sags down into whatever. And then I've got it this big, so I'm even another half inch, half inch beyond that. And I'm almost done. So that's really because I can't handle it any larger than this. And it's a struggle to get it small. And so there's a lot of interesting artistic uh, temptations to me. This is, um, once it's cut, I would actually, the whole second step is this. I would um, extrude it um, on both sides. I would thin it out on both sides, leave the middle fat, flat, fat, and basically get this, where the, the middle is fat and the two sides are thin, by putting this down like that on the rotating surface. And again, not today, tomorrow, or some other day. I mean. um, anyway, it's all bigger than it should be. And then clouds, one thing I have never done before, and I want to try with this, are sort of vortex clouds. Um, first I had to build Australia and New Zealand, and other possible Indonesias. This is how they'll go sideways. And then this, the clouds, we're going to, um, clouds are going to, this is my whiteboard, pizza box, paper. Uh, clouds, so the, con oh no, sorry, the continents are going this way, why, because I'm cutting that way, and, and when the earth spins, it, the sun rises on the east, and so this is the east seeing the sun first as it's rotating this way, so the rotation will be going that way as I cut down through a slice of the sun. Um, many continents are in here. Where are the clouds? The clouds are going to be, I'm going to attempt to make them like this, where they're slagging the time of the continents. And they're feeling like, uh, uh, like we're kind of going with the Earth, but we're, slowing, we're sort of on our own little time thing here. So the continents are going to have a separate motion from the clouds. That'll be fun. Each of them are built as a vortex. I'll explain that. And then um, that's pretty much it. For the, that's a general overview. 
into it. Um, uh, the vortex is like, if this is the main angle of the actual thing, the vortex is, uh, that's going faster than, uh, that's moving faster than the Earth is moving. Um, it, to be lagging, they have to come to do like this. But to be lagging, I would have to also press them down and be super oval, not circular at all, which is, so I'm going to do it like this, but that, that gives me a different outcome, um, which is uh, the continents are going faster than the clouds. So the continents are spinning, the clouds are just sort of hanging out and they're slower. Okay, Let's see if that happens. That's my thought. Um, this is another like example. I did this to show you, like I just said, if you thinned it out, like if it was a, a, a slower angle like this, I would have to make it more global like that. You see how it's pressed down? And, okay, excellent. This is what I'm going for today, um, the vortex. Um, I have not built a lot of the clouds that I should have built, so this might get tedious. Uh, I'm going to do this one, I'm going to go to the continents, and then I'll go to the tedious part. Where we can play music, dance, and just watch me uh, search this stuff in my hands. You can see how fast it goes. This is helpful, the, the uh, pasta grinder. Okay. Um, you know, I pre-made as much as I could here. It's not nearly enough to cover the vast amount of aquatic um, stuff, and Juan made some extra. I, this is a great audience participation moment. Okay, so pass that around. Goal audience. Now, I think it's good. Thank you. Is to, no, is to make one, two, three sandwiches out of it, right? It's, uh, like these kinds of color sandwiches where you stack them, just keep repeating one, two, three, one, two, three. Soup chefing in the front. Awesome. Uh, so the vortex is like a local cloud pattern. Um, any questions? Just to, just so that was a lot. All right. Lots of questions. Lots of questions. <laughs> see nodding, and I see that. All right. Uh, this this is two things. And I put it on an angle. So I'm going to build it like this. I think like everything straight up just as I can do it. And then plan it to be like that. Um, let me move these out of the way so you can see. I, I get the feeling that you're out of eye line. Um, not too far, though. Um, don't need these anymore. Lots of questions. Uh, okay. Can you see a little bit better? Over, okay. So this, I know, is a little tiny surface. Feel free to stand up and feel free to come closer. Don't worry. If this is getting it. I'm very happy with that. Thank you very much. Uh, Martin Guitar. Oh, yes, yes. yes, Martin. Hand for Martin to set up all this equipment. I would not be doing it without you because I can't imagine the amount of extra work that I would have to try. So these are, um, what I, I call these, uh, Imagine these like a uh, starry, starry night cloud uh, rotate, like in my strata like that painting right back that there, that right? Starry, right? uh, starry star night. Um, so the swirly clouds. The swirly things. I'm making a little swirly thing. And remember, in motion this direction, all I'm going to do is make it uh, a con cone. It's just going to be a cone aiming at you. And the key is I have to keep pinching it down. Um, all the way, so it continues to be coming from the center going out. So it's both doing this, and it's also emanating. Um, I'm going to do a lot of these, so it won't be... So um, you have to keep sort of a... Put, pinching it toward the center, toward the middle. Keep pinching it down in, and also bring it forward in time. Bring the, the spatial part, like a winding clock, right? But the winding clock is... Um, not coming from the center, it's more looping on the outside each time. That's what I'm, that's what I'm trying to do. Loop on the outside, loop on the outside. Or loop. Um, very sloppy. Um, hopefully, if you keep pinching so the middle is always coming from the middle out, and you keep winding so the clock is always winding this way in that direction, this is what this is attempting to do. Then, um, oh, thank you. And then I'm going to 
add sort of like, you know, uh, Leatherman always have hurricane maps. <laughs> what? So we take the sandwiches and then we start like twisting. Yes, you, try, you do start twisting, but if you're trying to get this, actually, no. Um, uh, there's, a, there's one more thing to it. Here. Um, all right. Um, now, let me do this quickly. Okay, if you start at the top and you pinch, that's like the first thing, and you notice that I'm pinching it down and I keep sort of adding an outer loop to it, I'm actually going. Uh, backwards in time with uh, the uh, outer side. And I'm trying to pinch the crease so this keeps um, going one direction out, but it's also um, always also going that way, spreading at the same time that it's rolling out. Where is the, um, where is the camera? Oh, uh, in this case, it would be, right, it's, it's, it's right at 101. If you want the camera this way, then you're getting a, just a simple vortex. Since I'm going to put it at a shallow angle, um, uh, which means it's not moving that much. It's going to be a slightly oblong vortex. So like that. That's not a straight um, camera cut this way. It's going to be this way. Maybe tilt. Tilting it a little bit on an angle, which makes it more oval. Kind of cool? Yeah. Um, and I have to build a lot of these. Can, was there another question? No, so we're pressing the layers together. Yeah. And then we're kind of twisting them in a way that's not um, no, actually I would, I would uh, cut them, for this I would cut them in half or in thirds or in quarters. Um, yeah, that's it. Okay. If you want to cut it like that. Um, and, and then um, imagine you have, oh, and then you want to press it down so it's probably thinner, okay. like actually work it. The more you cut it, the easier it is for you to your thumbs and fingers to actually press it down. The more thick and central it is, the harder the workout on your muscles to yeah, yeah. Like trying to thin it's it out. Like this, it's like too thick. It's too thick, yeah. And the mass of all the everything it makes, just makes all of it harder. So you really want the knife to cut it. You're, you're, yours has to be cut in half. They're too thick. Just slice down the middle. Yeah. Oh, oh, scissors. Scissors? Oh, knife. Yeah, it's a dental knife. That's, That's I call it. it the pickle knife, which is a pear knife. The t smallest pear knife you can get, but sand the front of it off of the grinder. So it's not dangerous. Well, it's less dangerous, I should say, to kids. And if it's kids, make sure it's a double blade. Don't try to make it first. Is that what you use for like, cutting, like, I don't know, like the globe right there? This is what I use, yes. Wow. question is, what knife do I use? Yes, there's lots of knife questions. Uh, wire, wire better now. Heated wire cutter, never tried, but wire cutter is so bad. A heated knife might be something. Yeah. I don't know about that. And also, I've been told if you Clorox wipe this knife, we should make a note of that if we have any Clorox wipes anywhere. But before we start cutting, um, it'd be good to try wiping it. Um, I've been told, I've never done it. Like, yeah, just so it doesn't build Yeah, up. and I tried to sharpen these. I have a sharpener here if anybody wants to sharpen them. Um, this is, people who know how to sharpen knives are going to say, oh my god, I don't believe you're doing that. This shows how stupid I am. But generally, I would think it works like that. And it doesn't seem to have hurt it, but it could be wrong. In the sense of, so you're cutting, yeah, it's good. All right, so everybody has something cut good. Um, uh, not, not everybody. <laughs> you know, now that I think of it, maybe this is better. I know this is very strange to see me changing the mood in the middle. Um, uh, a simpler way to explain it, perhaps a better result, because there's many different results, maybe this isn't so bad, is um, just grow it from the bottom. I was trying to take the taper, like the Christmas tree down. We're going to build the Christmas tree from the bottom up. All right, so on it, this is the bottom branches of the Christmas tree. And really what you're doing is rotating around the center of it to keep it uh, going up and up the, the candy cane lane, yeah, that's it. So if you can make a Christmas tree and coil it and just make it coil all the way to the top, just uh, keep pinching um, the... It's sort of on an angle? Yeah, on an angle. Good. Angles are everything, baby, yeah, totally. It's, you want it to be uh, both rotating like a clock rotates in space, and you want the... Thank you. You want the... Thank you very much, Pat. The center to be 
uh, always pinching toward that center. So it's always a, it's the, where'd the cone shape go? Cone? Give me a cone. All right, so remember this puppy? Again, it's a, it's a primitive. So you're putting two primitives into action. You're using this primitive, which is always coning up, like here I am. See, I'm putting it on an angle and I'm rotating it up like that, right? That's pretty clear? All right. Um, the key is, as I do that, keep uh, pinching the, um, the part that's at the top, right? So I've done one cycle and this little, this is now the top of the Christmas tree. I've done a little loop. Pinch it down, do another loop, pinch it down. The reason for the pinch is it helps it be more concentric. So it's more plosive or explosive when it's cut away to let the, the flow of the outside surf cycle spread. That's the goal. Now I'm making these kinds of small. You can make them much larger and probably good. Let me do one larger. I'm really glad you're all trying. We could all put those in, by the way, if, you, if they're, if you get it. One thing I'd say, okay, so make them skinnier. Like you're, the, the problem is I'm working on this scale, this, uh, you know, there's a lot of density in the block. And when I, if I put a lot of fat texture in all of a sudden, it just doesn't, ju it, it has to be really determined. I have to make sure I really mean it. Right now, I would prefer it to be, and, and rolling it really isn't the answer. Yeah, okay, sorry. Pinching it. No, this is good, this is great. Don't be sorry. Uh, very few people have, I've never done this much interactive, so I'm really happy to have them. Um, like, watch me, I've got a very fat thing there, right? So, this is extrusion 101. You're just uh, thumb to finger, thumb to finger, thumb to finger, just going and going. Um, if you had a table, you could do knuckles. I think knuckles are great. Yeah, grab more, try more. Um, it's very boring, or it isn't boring, it's very... Um, um, meditative. Yeah, meditative, it's uh, quilting, is what I was going to say. When, when you actually do this with friends, if you ever do around the table, it would be awesome to do. <laughs> it's just parallel play. One person's quilting, the other person's quilting. Um, the reason I bring that up is it's very much the adult experience that I had as a kid in Playtime. Because um, my two sisters and I were doing parallel play every day, constantly sitting at the, our little kitchen table, having our little territories, like good proto-capitalists, I guess, or whatever, natural humans. <laughs> Uh, I want my closet, I want my land. And then building a building and um, learning how to do this by hand. So this is just native to me, don't feel bad. If, so I've already extruded a great deal just by pressing it. Um, what exactly do you mean when you say extruded? Excellent question. Um, extrusion is simply um, the act of compressing a volume mass down further and further. Okay. And as you do that, the volume squeezes out and extrudes itself fatter in, I mean not fatter, it spreads itself out over a larger vault uh, spread. Because you've taken a thick thing and made it thin, and so it got really, yeah. Like, um, all of these pre-made textures uh, started out as, they all start out like this. They all get cut like sandwiches, like, you see the box of sandwiches? You want to hand it to me and I'll show it. Um, so this is just like sandwiches uh, of uh, slices. Those go together, and then um, when you see me pressing now, right now, that's extrusion. Does that make sense? Yes. Extrusion. Okay. Um, if you're doing stratica texture, you don't have to be as precise as this. You could just twist it like a candy cane. It's that simple, and it could be incredibly fun but mostly if you put it on an angle. It's less interesting this way. But if you put it on a steep angle, not a, not a 90 degree, but like a 70, or it's really sexy, because it, it's like parts of the first part of the animation show up early, and the parts in the first animation show up late, and it has this very mesmerizing effect. So simplest technique, now that you have it in your hands. I'm doing these vortex things, Christmas tree vortex, but uh, try it just as a twist and put it on a 90 degree, a 70 degree angle and watch the weirdness of one of the advance of time coming backwards and the frontwards of time leaping into the front. It's, uh, that's a great example of how change of the knife changes everything. Um, these were extruded. Um, I'm gonna do one more big, big ass vortex. Well, they, we're gonna call this the Pacific vortex because it needs a lot of, um, I need to put a lot of, um, 
I don't know, space. Again, I got to use up a lot of space in this block. And uh, some people ask, like, what colors? And you can see there's a lot of color choices. But I want to emphasize that sometimes I get to the bottom of what I even have physically. It, this uses up place so quickly that a lot of my color choices are pra just practical. Oh my god, I've run out of that. Would it be so bad to put a purple where a blue was? <laughs> they kind of have a similar tone value, but they notice or care. And that serendipity brings some interesting choices, but it's really out of a pragmatism. Okay, I'm trying to do the Christmas tree as much as I can. I'm gonna go ahead. Oh yeah, right, we got a couple. I don't know. Yeah, well, you know, the proof is in the pudding. The only way I learned this is to do this, do this, talk, think about it. Write it down. Make it, so let's just do that. Let's see what you got. Okay, yeah, what do we okay. got? Pretty cool. Now, if it's animating, like, outward, uh -huh. it seems like it a little, little bit. It's actually be in there, and it seems like it's good. Okay. So you're helping me build this. We're crowdsourcing All right. clouds yeah. now. I'll, I'll keep going. Clouds. Keep going, and they're going to be very unique. Crowdsourcing. Uh, <laughs> Can I watch you do one more Christmas tree? Yeah, they're really shitty. I mean, I've, okay. I've done them three different ways, so it's not you. It's <laughs> it's a it's a struggle <laughs> to to. Okay, ideally, see, I'm I'm not trying to make it too thick. It's hard to make it, and it only works to a point. So, all right. Um, At the bottom of the Christmas tree, you're pinching toward the middle, and you're just coiling the thing up, and you're making that spread at the back. That's spreading at the back. You're pinching here. You're rolling it around again, uh, pinching that in, pinching the top above it. Yeah, it's two pinches. Look at that. It's just like quilting. And you roll it around again. You add, like, here's an extra piece of not, not well done, but it's clouds. It doesn't matter. It's not all precise. So, it's curling up the tree, but halfway through, I'm pinching that. I roll it around again, and uh, in one hand, I do the 180, I pinch it again. I'm always just trying to keep that center nailed to an explosive entry point, so the eye is, ca is catching the fact that it's going one direction. How's it looking out there? Any yeah. questions? Lots Probably of people. Lots Everybody's of waving. joining. Joining! Hey, welcome. <laughs> September 10th. It's a sweaty oh, September. <laughs> It's the worst time to be cutting clay. It's the best time to be working with it because it's very soft, although that can be also really mushy. So maybe it's not the best time. Is this too skinny? Um, yes, ex excellent question. Is this too skinny? It is the right idea. You got it exactly kind of right. The, pro the reason it's skinny is that you didn't, pin well, you know, rather than say it's wrong, let's say what it'll do. It's going to be a tight, um, just a, a tight, uh, I don't know if it's very close. You know, I, I don't see the, the center pinches very pinched, like that. Like if I were to go back down, I would want those to be pushed down and tight. Do a 180, push down and tight. All right, we're getting, we're getting there, thank you. It's hard to explain. So that, that would be the way I would do it. So that, but yours, what he did there is possibly workable. And I wouldn't say that it's wrong. What I want everybody to do is think. That's all this is, right? Just every decision is a kind of uh, possible um, surprise. And it's not that there are a lot of surprises, because once you get into the language of it, you can see everything. Um, thank you. We have another one, crowdsourcing clouds. This is, this is actually, oh, it's just kind of, yeah. So um, you can see that it's a, sort of a candy cane rolled up, kind of skinny. Uh, one thing I can do, this is uh, negative extru extrusion. So actually pushing it back in is not against any rules. Mm -hmm. It isn't necessarily good. It will sort of mush it a little, but it's another way to, all right. I'm getting added um, candy canes. I'm going to, um, this one is good. Thank you, Mark. You know? You do it. Oh, thank you. You do understand that each one of these is good. <laughs> oh, I see. Yeah. And if used in the right way, for a reason, with the right outcome. 
Thank you. I've seen wow. several people come through. Keep it going. Yeah. This is good. This is the last thing that's done in time. I can do Australia and then slap all this in and, and uh, get that, you know, right. not make the live stream the entire Right. Part two. Yeah. Um, say, yep. I mean, yeah. when I'm looking at these, I'm seeing completely different animations going on, right? Reasons why each of these have a different outcome. And any angle I put it at will have a different outcome. Um, does that make sense to everybody? Like, just start thinking about each one of these now that are coming out. Even if they're not what I'm doing, uh, do they, at a certain angle, they may be actually better or different? Or, uh, all right. Now we're thinking logically. Um, I'm going to finish the big Pacific Vortex since I'm on it. Um, and this is a super stupid, badass, so, like Christmas lights. Just a bunch of. And if I were, I would never do this this fast. Very rarely would I work this fast, or if I was doing it for reals. Um, <laughs> but sometimes fast forces you into an interesting outcome. Working harder, longer, and more detailed is not necessarily the best outcome. You want to have the capability to do it. You want to be able to get that far. You have to. But um, you're, I'm always making choices toward a medium ground between chaos and coherence. And so I'm looking at this as a lot of chaos. Is it coherent enough that the rest of the gestalt, once all the pieces are put in, hey, this is great. Is there can, one? Can you see this crowdsourcing? <laughs> I mean, can the Instagram people see it? Does it get things up? Yeah, yeah. I'm cloud sourcing everybody. <laughs> it's fucking awesome. Wow, I am. All right, are we 30 minutes, 40 minutes in? How, where are we at? 41 I'm having, minutes. I'm having the, the pot. The pot, that's it for correction. This is like a blue tornado from Dorothy and the Wizard of Oz. Um, and I would, actually, I would think Stratocut physically like this is the most interesting thing. If you run off in the world and ever do one of these, I think you've got to think of how it first reacts physically to the viewer when they first see the outside of it. It's a mystery box going on inside there. And any angle you enter, enter the mystery box from can be dramatic in and of itself. And if you design the Stratocut to be sort of the penetrating moment where it like opens up in some plosive entry point, then it can just... Um, that going in and out of the caves, the cavities, the sense of geometry that's physical on the outside, into the morphic psycho, whatever, and then back out or into anything. So I'm just looking at this, and I, it occurs to me I need to do a hurricane as an entry point to a strata cut. And if I never do it, I hope somebody does. Right, back to the Pacific Ocean. <laughs> I could do that in the Pacific Ocean. David, do you need more see. crowdsourcing? Yes, I said, yes, I do. If there's yeah. more blue, I, I, I do. Is there one? Cloud, you could show us a cross section of to just yeah, yeah, see yeah. what the idea. Yeah, yeah, no. This, every time you do this, by the way, when you cut it up, and this is it. This is how you teach yourself: cut it, cut it, cut it. Make a note. What does that do? Um, each one of them will be slightly different. What this is going to do is a a little fat. The texture is a little too fat, right? Because when, when I'm um, trying to make that work with, um, I don't know. I'm going to go ahead and. Give you a sliver because it's hard to tell. Uh, this I call a proof, by the way, or a butt cut. This is where the loaf, you first see the underside of the loaf, like what the hell's in there. I have no idea because I've been working on it so hard. So that's, uh, that is um, South America flipped. So you'd have to flip that the other direction in your mind. Um, but you can see the level of texture in there. This is South America correct. Um, and you know, you can see certain clay choices where basically, oh, you know, the, the Plata River between Argentina and Uruguay and Colombia and the Amazon, they're all in there as an attempt, but it's really hard to see. And once it's in motion, you're going to kind of get it, I'm hoping. That's, it's going to be that gestalt where it's, it's super chaotic, but the motion itself is partially what makes it um, coherent. All right. Um, so the density of this means the density of that animation is a little too fat, right? Because you can see the amount of texture is not really coherent to this block. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Paul. Uh, what would I do with it? Um, wouldn't use it as is. 
the easiest thing is always just to extrude it one more time. And the only thing is if I extrude it one more time, so now it, it is a denser texture, done, uh, is that it will have animation and it's still in there. And then um, it will be sort of looping really like a racetrack, like an old uh, Roman, uh, what do they call those Roman racetracks with the, uh, the Greek? Circus Maximus? Circus Maximus, yes. <laughs> it's like half a mile, you turn half a mile. That's what this animation is going to be. David, there's a question asking, do you have any uncut strata cut you're holding on to? Absolutely, yes. Oh, uncut, yes, absolutely, I have. Um, I have one over there, by the way. Uh, we'll look at that later. Um, I'm not going to cut it up today. Um, I have 12 feet of a uh, voice sync, of a character doing voice sync to some words that I don't want to get into, but it's fun. It's just a headshot of uh, the character being expressive, and I thought, all right, I'm going to try that one. Um, I have a, a universe I can't find. If anybody wants to know, there's a missing strategy in my garage I really, really want to find and it's buried in a place that I cannot understand. Is that the um, yes. But it's a yep. universe swirling. It's a little bit like this, only the timing of the universe is done as a series of concentric circles and it's faster at the center, slower at the outside, and eventually has counter-rotation because it depends on the outer galaxies and how they rotate against the inner ones. That's that. And this one over here is an atom spinning. I won't show it. I, I do have it, I think, uploaded finally. So maybe I'll put, if I have it, I'll upload it. And it's a simple thing, but it's like six different uh, arcs of spinning, all you know, meticulously dialed in. All right, back to where we're at on the textures. So I just um, made that kind of uh, fat, and I'll use it in some way. No, we have to. I don't know. Um, and um, where am I? Um, if, yeah, at some point, if everybody needs a break, let me know. Um, but I'm going to keep plowing unless, uh, unless otherwise. Because it's just. What? We're going to do a break here. Oh, we're going to do a break here? Do you want me to stop? Is that Two. good for you, though? You need, you need time to have every battery? 2.15. Or? Yeah. Oh, okay. We could take a 10 minute break. 2.15. Okay. Okay, okay. So you, how, yes. many, how much time? 10? 15. Yeah, we okay, 15. Just call it out. Give me a minute before you yeah. call it. Okay, thank you. So um, I'm going to make this the Pacific Ocean. It's going to be on a slant. Um, is it? Uh, yes, that's right. It's going to be on a shallower slant. And then, um, you know, I'm going to proof it because you can't really proof it up here. It's a pinch. And the reason I'm okay doing that, so, you know, that's just a that's a giant, beautiful hurricane swirl of clouds in the ocean uh, that isn't, I haven't put in Hawaii or any island in there, <laughs> but I might, you may have to. And we're continuing to crowdsource clouds. All right, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and start Australia and then we'll break. Um, these are, of course, that's, um, so I have, um, oh yeah, this is, um, uh, after this is everything minus Australia. I want to go ahead and cut it right now in a way that is really weird and radical, which is because I need that slippage. I need every, in time, I need to slip north, so I'm going to make this strange cut here because uh, it makes it easier to manipulate as I'm sliding it up. And the comparative moment, it's going to end up like that, the comparative moment is you got to make a choice somewhere. And the question is, how much is your eye uh, alerted by it? And my, you'll see you know, you'll see the result, but it won't be much. Um, and I'll show you some other tricks. So I'm going to do Australia. 10 minutes? What do you think? Take, trust okay. me. Take it time. What'd you say? Trust me. Take your time. Take, take my time. Time. Awesome. Let's just, uh, but super. a break is a good idea. Yeah. Then I'm going to, I got to get Australia. So here, maybe if we can get Australia done, and we have time, then we'll be in good shape for the clouds and we'll come back. Um, all right, Australia, it's a, it has um, the outback. It has some green areas at the bottom. I sit here and I use my little map and I try to study that little thing, so I'm aiming my eyes at it. And I'm tr the reason I do it top down is this is what is capable, people are capable of. It needs to be about this tall, so what is that? Um, about, um, 
yay high. That's my objective for heights, so I'm trying to build things yay high. Um, I'm going to make this the bottom of Australia because it's the greener part of it. Um, I would spend more time on Australia if I were really building it, but I'm going to do it quickly. And don't feel bad, you're the only continent that people get to see how I built, and the other guys don't. So there is a bunch of brown, uh, well, there's some, it would be ideal if I actually made this the outback, right? The, I'm doing this as sort of like dusty, it's, again, it's risk, it's not so much reality, sadly. And it's also the clay I have. Um, um, and you'd be surprised how small everything has to be, because I'm trying to work small. This isn't going to be much. By the time I'm done, uh, it's going to be, you know, I would want to put, um, you know, lines, like lines of green around it. Um, typically, I would want lime green or some other um, color. I like, when I do highlights or like territorial boundaries, I usually use black. But since I'm going with um, this non-black, you know, green and blue, blue marble look, um, this would be the ability to do the outer rim of the continent. And it is a lot like weaving, so I'm putting it on the outside. But just because I've made a couple of blobs here, it's not the end of the shaping. Um, we get it higher up. Um, we get some. Uh, all right, I'm doing a really hatchet job here, which is two textures instead of one. So I'm adding something that's sort of a similar texture, but it will be. I could either feather it or not. I'm not going to. Okay, and then. Um, so this green has a sort of lime green on the inside, which is the inside, and this is the outside. Um, then um, it's good to go back in and pinch in what you really want out of the continent. So I've just done a very generalized bunch of bobs. Now I'm using my thumb to actually gouge it. And if I had more green, I would reverse gouge it. Again, this should be thinner. It's going to be fat, because Aussies like their steaks big. But no, I just don't have the color um, prepared, so this will be fat. Um, now, all of the ocean currents, when I'm doing close to the coasts, I use different textures because these are fat. I could use them. Maybe I will. Um, I tend to be uh, lighter, lighter blues around the edges of the continents because of the continental shelves and the sense that the oceans are deeper. Again, this back to a Mercator view, not a real blue marble view. But I'm actually building the, the ocean into it because um, it helps grow the block coherently. Like I'm at, There's actually a structural problem, and unless I'm building both sides of it at once, I'm actually, it falls over too easily. But I will go ahead and pinch that. Like I'll you know, screw it down over the blue, and then I might actually take the blue and you know, slide it back across. So I'll dig it in. I'm making a new pinch, and this is going to become an inlet. Yep. You make some more. Um... Hey, everybody. Awesome. Hey, guys. Awesome. Come on in. How are you doing today? Uh, yeah, great. Uh, live streaming, uh, five more people. Yeah. Uh, many here from last time, and they're bringing friends. And nice. It's cool. It is nice. So I'm building the ocean on Australia. And then I'm, uh... oh, yeah. The ocean's in. Um, I'm going to green it up a little bit more. This is again just a border since I don't have any black. A lot of times in clay, this uh, abstract needs some definition. So for your coherence quotient, you can't let Stratica go wild. We can, it's fun, but if you want to narrative it enough, you know why, where it's going and why. Um, so there, and then I'm, I'm going to pinch that even more. So I'm making a really skinny blue green right now. Right? This is the weaving part. I would call this weaving, not the texture map, you know, all that other stuff. And then I just flip back over on itself, and now I've made a little distance y thing. And again, I'm not doing justice to Australia when I do this. Um, it does have that little jet. We're going to call that little jet that goes up into Indonesia. That's what I built. You, you know the word, right? We're going, okay. Um, so, since I'm on a clock, I'm going to go with some other more um, 
the ground candy, you got the light yellows, little, little greens. And this will be the um, Eastern Australia, uh, uh, sorry, Western Australia, the perky side. But I think that I'm making it too big. Because my question is, is this a continent that's bigger than that part of Africa? I'm sorry, uh, South America? Is it about the right size? Yes. The Australians would say yes, that's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the Aussies, yeah, yes. Yeah. Australia is the biggest. Uh, okay. Um, the key is I'm trying to let the, I'm not trying not to sweat the big stuff. So now I'm carving in the bottom, and this is going to be Queensland at the bottom. I'm going to avoid is it Tasmania or that little little island off the tip that Elon Musk put all those uh, uh, sol, uh, you know huge battery Tesla the giant battery capacitors for the electrical grid. That little island. It's a great experiment in uh, green energy right now. Um, okay, so I've made uh, Queensland over here. Again, uh, I'm going to try to find a light blue. I'm going to go ahead and use the first crowdsource. Um, I'm going to slice the crowdsource in the middle. This is my way of quickly getting into a shape I really want, rather than right now it's a little hot, it's a little sweaty, this feels in my hand a little. So I'm slicing instead and filling in the cavity between Queensland and the inside of Australia. Um, I should actually be adding uh, this. This, by the way, is clay that's been uh, double boiled. You know, double boiler is a single water boiler, and you put a pot of clay in above that. It double boils, and you can melt any color you want. And then you just roll it, up, lay it out on a on a saran wrap, and so you can get an instant sort of flat flat shape. Uh, this would be a good chance to use this. But it kind of melts? Like yeah, it melts. Oh, okay. oh yeah, plasticine is this uh, strange thing that is meltable, um, and that's a good and a bad thing. And so as archival art, it has always been struggling to figure out how to preserve plasticine, and it's been very difficult. The sculptures get dusty and messed up really easily, and therefore it's it because it can be um, flat, protected, and the visceral, and now that I'm in the weeds on it, but the visceral flatness of it when applied to a plexi or a piece of wood or whatever is actually why it doesn't go bad in heat. Like, um, it, is, it has to go nowhere to go. It has that sort of liquid tension sitting on the surface like water. It won't actually go anywhere if it's actually touching something on the flat. Anyway, that's the theory as to why a pit is not uh, as limp and uh, it, it, this can be attacked by heat in a different way. Uh, on the other hand, this came through 100 degree heat, um, and the heat inside is very cool, and so it takes a long time for it to actually affect the center of it. So it's got some good uh, earth-like properties because it's clay. I'm putting the outside texture on. I might have 10 more minutes before um, the uh, high depth goes down. And we take a short break, charge up some batteries. Anyway, this is some more coastal outline. It should be thinner. This is the stick because Australia is where everything is larger. All right. Um, now, this is terrible. I, I'm going to go back and reshape this a bit over the break if there's nothing else. This is terrible. Um, no, no, this is nature. I'm sorry. Um, okay. That's great. Uh, that isn't what I intended, um, and I'm not sure quite. Oh, so I'm trying to get this is the this is the other end. So I always have to look at the other end and say, oh, wait a second, whatever I designed on this side is not actually coherent on that side. And there's a reason it needs to be for this particular style I'm about to do. You need to have both sides kind of similar because I'm going to use each end on the other end. Yeah, okay. All right, I see where I'm going. So the biggest thing is that this is fatter. And this is thinner, and so I'm going to extrude it by hand like this, ba -ba 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 uh, just to get it even um, by hand. And each time you do that, you're trying to re-sculpt it into the uh, desired shape. So I'm trying to make things one more defined from whatever that little jut uh, more defined. Whether it's successful or not, I don't know. But you can see it's more even now in general. And let's see. Um, I still think it's kind of giant. It's, just, it's like half the size. All right, so what I have to do is extrude it more and make it thin. So I'm just shrinking Australia by the too. <laughs> so it fits the rest of the continental scale. No offense. Uh, 
All right. I'm, because I may only get to this, uh, on, I'm going to go ahead and do Indonesia just because it's, it's just giant. There's so many people in Indonesia. And it never, it never occurs much in maps. Um, so I want to take uh, some kind of green texture. And this shows you how I'm running so low that I'm actually going to let yellow go in. There's only a very little bit of yellow being used. And very, it's not this bright, for example, but the color palette is just shifted off the, and that's the lack of having more material under pressure. Um, this, so if you think about this, this technique, it's a really good one. So I'm just making a lot of little micro, um, micro techniques here. I'm making like static, where like you can see it's just uh, misaligned lines make it, um, uh, and then I'm, I'm going to basically extrude it by cutting it, um, cutting it lengthwise, and using one side here and one side there. So I've made now the approximate length of where I'm trying to get there. And when it comes out, it's just, what would you call that? It's um, digital, really. It's like an analog version of, it's just kind of like a, a digital frizz. It's a bunch of little, um, yeah. And that gives the island of Indonesia some information. Um, because it's a rainforest, a lot of it. Meaning, I don't want it just to be a plain uh, green line. Um, again, it's way too big. Uh, it's got a lot of blue around it. Way too much blue. I would never do it like this if I could. And for expedience sake, I'm going to cut it down the middle because it has to be much smaller. I'm going to say, all right, these two are the same Indonesia. And now it's that tall. Uh, and Indonesia goes blue side up to West River. Blue side up to the top side of West River. Um, I wanted to do the Kiwis um, at least. They matter. Lord of the Rings. Um, Yakanda Williams, I think? Yacinda Williams, the Prime Minister of New Zealand? Any papers? No. Juanita? No. Yacinda. Um, anyway, she's a female Prime Minister. Pretty cool. Uh, all right, this is approximately high, a little higher, but that's because I'm trying to make it skinnier and I'm extruding it and smaller. And that's basically Australian Indonesia in the sloppiest way. And it will glue onto the um, onto the bottom of um, that's uh, that's Russia, Asia, the science, you know, uh, was it Singapore, India? Um, anyway, that's India, that's Singapore, uh, China. There's the Himalayas. Um, now you can only see it when I explain it; otherwise, it just looks like a bunch of. And it's going to be on an angle, so it's all going to be somewhat fl fatter. So you have to know that each one of these, as much as I failed, should have been thinner than what it is. It should have been squished more than not what I resulted in. I wanted it to be like an anamorphic lens, like when you shoot an anamorphic lens, and the actual celluloid has got that really squeezed look to it. That's what I was going for. Um, I kind of did it on South America. It sort of squeezed almost enough. You can see it's a little thinner than what it really is, but not enough. When I put it on an angle, that's going to be so bad. It's so bad. I mean, really, I want to be as shallow an angle as possible. That would be the correct angle right there. But I don't have enough material, so I have to compromise, so at least you know why. All right, and then Australia goes to the bottom of, um, of uh, Singapore, Malaysia, and then there's Indonesia. Oh, wrong line. And there's Indonesia. And I've extruded it enough. Uh, it's a little thin in the middle. You know, I'm going to leave it this size because you can never have enough um, when you're sliding things. But eventually it has to be done uh, really bad. Let me fix this a little bit more. So I'm pushing in. Is that right? I did it on the wrong side. Wow. Yeah, I, I did it on the wrong side. You can see how that would happen. Um, uh, let's see for this is it's this way. Bingo. And this way. No, this 
side first, we got the, the ocean on the side for Australia. Indonesia goes in. All right. Now, uh, a lot of these cloud things are now going to go in here, but on an on a angled basis. That's better. Although, no, it's upside down. You have to have the outback. The, the yellow part has to be on the top. I guess I'm getting, uh, when I see the butt end of this cut, uh, I have done the mistake of not having it be continuous all the way through. This was supposed to be the outback. It's very tiny. Uh, so you forgive me, but you'll know why. All right. Uh, I want to keep going until he gets called. Until he's out of battery, then I'll say this. And then we'll take a 15 minute break, evidently, and I'll try to live stream the second part. Um, Honestly, that's a good segue. What? A good place? Right here? Um, all right, give me ten minutes, two minutes, and we'll take a break. Um, uh, so this is an attempt at Australia Queensland. It's way too big, but hey, it's fun. Um, New Zealand. I'm going to do a really fast New Zealand. Beautiful island I've never been to. Somebody can hang out there someday. It'd be fun. I know two really, Kiwis and the Reds Kiwis. Centered human beings. You know. uh, this is too fast. It's too fast. So I'm going to use it um, not only that way. I'm going to use it this way. You say, all right, it's two islands. Let's separate them and make sure that the blue is intersecting, intersecting um, between the two. Um, that's really terrible. This is a very stupid, simple way to do it. They're not this shape. Um, I will probably repair this on the break, but New Zealand will be hanging out over here, and then I have to put all the swirls in. Um, I'm going to do the Pacific. You're going to have to do a giant Pacific, and when I do that, um, I'm going to have to throw in um, a major surgery at some point and add in Hawaii. Because there really is no way to get in Hawaii and there are clouds going over it that, you know, maybe a little speck of green will be thrown in. So if you see that, it'll happen. But probably not on the live stream and only in person if you're hanging out. Because is this a good time to stick with? All right. Good? Rotation? Yeah. Come back. If you'd like in 15 minutes on the live stream, everybody's going to go to the bathroom and get some refreshments. This is the... Uh, this is what I'll be trying to build in time space. Uh, it'll be going on that.